Girls soccer makes history. Fall athletes wrap up their seasons. And Ryan Franey shares his thoughts on online learning. This is MET News. Welcome back to MET News. I'm Leanne McDonald. Fall sports are coming to a close, so let's get right to MET Sports. The girls' soccer team has finished off the regular season with a strong record of 7-1. All fall sports teams participated in a double elimination league tournament instead of a state tournament this year. On Friday, November 6th, the Lady Sachems took a huge 5-0 win over the Rockland Bulldogs. Let's check out a quick highlight of the night by Noah Miles. The Lady Sachems got off to a hot start, with Tristan Gomes using some footwork to start the breakaway. Upfield, Mandy Buchunt scored the first goal for the Sachems with an assist by Katie Benson. This was followed quickly by another goal from Addie Latender, assisted by Arjuna Jones. Defensively, Jada Cochran worked hard all game to break up Rockland's offense and create opportunities for her teammates. Though scoreless, the second quarter was a display of Middleborough's hustle and footwork. Eliana Bush had a great shot off the mark in the start of the quarter. Rockland's defense tried but couldn't catch up with the Lady Sachem's quick feet all game. Like here, Megan Labreeze easily working around Rockland for an opportunity. Maggie DeRoges not only let up zero goals throughout this game, but was also quick to convert stops to offensive opportunities for her teammates. Tristan Gomes didn't let off the gas, getting around a defender with a smart pass to Katie Benson. And Jada Cochran once again shut down Rockland's offense and brought the ball back downfield for an offensive possession. The intensity and grit from the Lady Sachems continued into the third quarter, with Jada Cochran leading the defense once again and stopping Rockland's offense. Emily Benson turned it up in the third quarter, displaying some fancy footwork and hard-to-cover dribble moves. The Rockland defense was left in the dust trying to stop the ball. The quarter wrapped up with a quick break from the Lady Sachems, ending in a goal from Julia D'Amelia. Maya Dupuis sent a long pass to Eliana Bush, who quickly recovered and passed the ball inside for a perfectly positioned goal for Julia D'Amelia. The final goal of the game started with a long fast break from Tristan Gomes and Katie Benson. This led to a great goal from Addie Latender to seal the game, 5-0. Great job, St. Jones. The Middleborough Sachem faced a tough 1-0 loss against East Bridgewater on Monday, November 9th. The ladies recovered and went on to defeat Rockland 1-0 on Wednesday, November 11th. Alexis Vanderzad had an amazing finish to secure the game-winning goal. The ladies came out on top with an amazing win against East Bridgewater on Monday, November 16th. Maya Dupuis was able to find the back of the net, but East Bridgewater came back, leaving the score 1-1 until the end. The teams then fought hard in two 10-minute periods, but the score remained tied. In a thrilling penalty kick shootout, the Sachems were able to get the win and continue their tourney bid. Shout out to goalie Maggie DeRoches for two amazing saves and Tristan Gomes for the winning penalty shot. Congratulations to the varsity girls soccer team for making school history and being the first team ever to bring home a league championship at their game against East Bridgewater on November 19th. The game began with a fast start from both teams. Early in the first quarter, East Bridgewater star Avery Lavangie put the Vikings on board with an amazing shot off a throw and play. Minutes later, Middleborough responded with an incredible goal by Maya Dupuis off a perfect assist from Alexis Vanderzide. Later in the second quarter, Middleborough increased to a 2-1 lead after Alexis Vanderzide had an amazing left-footed shot in the top corner off of an assist from Megan Labrie. EB came back with another outstanding shot by Avery Levangie off a penalty. 
For the second time, the ladies competed in two 10-minute overtime periods. Late in the second overtime period, the Sachems were gifted a corner kick that resulted in a handball in the box by EB. Alexis Vanderzide, Middleborough's leading scorer, stepped up to take the penalty kick and make history for Middleborough. She buried the penalty shot to bring home a banner for Middleborough. The ladies returned home in a dramatic fashion with a police escort. Great job to the varsity girls soccer team for making Middleborough proud. Congratulations to seniors Emily Benson, Katie Benson, Aileen Petty, Maggie DeRoges, Mandy Bucon, Maya Dupuis, Jada Cochran, Megan Labrie, Tristan Gomes, and Alexis Vanderzide for an outstanding final season. The MHS varsity boys soccer team completed their regular season with a record of one and Qualifying for the league double elimination tournament, the team lost 0-3 to Randolph in the first round on November 6, and then lost 4-7 against East Bridgewater in the double elimination game on November 9th. Congratulations to the seniors Matthew Farley, Matthew Medeiros, Michael Aben, Joseph Childs, Dylan Latender, Jacob Donahue, and Zivonimir Goost on completing their final soccer season as Sachems. The MHS varsity field hockey team finished in second place in the South Shore League. After their 0-1 loss against East Bridgewater on Friday, November 13th, the Lady Sachems wrapped up their season with a 4-7 record. Congratulations to the field hockey seniors Tegan Ambrose, Paige Fritz, Gabby LaRock, Leanne Melendi, and Cami Morano. Under the leadership and drive of this class, the field hockey program and team culture has been transformed into a competitive tournament-bound team for the past three years. We can't wait to see what comes for the team next year. The boys and girls cross-country teams finished their season on Tuesday, November 10th at the annual league meet. The boys came in second in the league with the girls taking the top spot, led by senior captain Shaylin Gallagher. On the boys' side, senior captain Adam Montrass and junior Mike Knightlick led the team throughout the entire season. Congratulations to all the seniors this year. Adam Montross, Dylan Latender, Noah Miles, Shaylin Gallagher, Anna Devona, and Allie Cowgill. Good job to the boys and girls cross country team and good luck moving forward with the indoor season. The golf season came to an end after a loss at Cohasset during the league tournament on Wednesday, November 4th. Congratulations to Colby Allen who led the team with an 85, followed by Aiden Larson scoring a 110 and Peter Hinko with an 113. Congratulations to Steven DeRico, Colby Strong, Jack Parziali, Matt Ruggiero, Aiden Larson, Peter Hinko, and Colby Allen for finishing off their senior season. The boys ended their 2020 season with a record of four wins and six losses. Great season, Sachems. As the fall teams wrap up their seasons, we want to congratulate all the athletes being named All-Stars. Congrats to Matthew Farley and Matthew Medeiros, who were selected from boys soccer to be named South Shore League All-Stars. Congrats to Megan Labrie, Addison Enos, and Eliana Bush for being named South Shore League All-Stars from girls soccer. Congrats to Alexis Vanderzide, also from girls soccer, for being named the South Shore League Eastern Mass and All-State All-Star. Congrats to the final girls soccer athlete, Jada Cochran, who was named a South Shore League and Eastern Mass All-Star. Congrats to Cami Morano, Leanne Melendi, and Isabella Mosley for being named South Shore League All-Stars for field hockey. Also congrats to Isabella Mosley for being named South Shore Player of the Year. MIAA has announced that ice hockey and basketball have the green light for this winter season. Provided they undergo the proper modifications, those athletes will have the opportunity to participate this year. Unfortunately, MIAA has postponed wrestling, winter cheerleading, and indoor track until the fall two season. Good luck to all the winter athletes as practices begin soon. Despite the dynamic of fall sports being altered this year, students now have an additional opportunity to participate in sports that they normally wouldn't be able to play. The Middleborough High School Athletic Department has worked hard to create an intramural season where some of the sports that were postponed in the fall can still be played. Sports that will take place in the fall two season will include volleyball, wrestling, football, competitive cheerleading, and unified basketball. The fall two season will start on February 22nd and will go until April 25th. This new season is a great opportunity for athletes to try a new sport. With almost everyone here at MHS taking part in online learning, it leads some to wonder what will happen in the future with regards to online learning. Ryan Fernie created an editorial to discuss with us what he thinks the future will hold. So, everyone's doing online learning, okay. Now I want you to think about what will happen next. 
Will some classes go fully remote? What about snow days? Are we just going to do online learning if it snows too hard? And most importantly, is online learning better than in person? So let's tackle these one at a time. I think that some classes would be able to go entirely remote. Courses like English and history, you don't necessarily have to be in a classroom in order to do all of those things. For example, you can give the basic read the textbook and answer questions based on what you read. You can do that through online because I'm sure a lot of the textbooks that are out there, you can definitely find them online and do it that way. But contrasting that, there are some classes that you simply can't do remote, like science and gym. Like, how, how are you going to do a lab at home? And what are you supposed to do in gym? Just like sit there with your camera turned on and work out for 30 minutes? Regardless, I think it gets the necessary information out for people to study. Now, I am currently enrolled in a self-directed online course, and I find it completely effortless to do what it is that I'm doing. I find it much, much easier. Now, self-directed is an entirely different subject, but I can say from personal experience that I think online learning is better. Now, again, I'm just one person, so this may be different for a lot of you, but in my personal opinion, it gives me a lot more freedom with the work that I'm doing. It allows me to go at my own pace. I can see exactly how much it is that I need to do, keep track of it a lot easier, and it's just a huge stress reliever. So, I don't know. I think it might be the case. Now, the next thing that I was curious about was snow days. Think about it. So schools are doing online learning, and I was sort of thinking to myself, well, now that snow days are, with snow days, it's going to be like, the schools will just say, oh, well, since we know that online learning works so well, we can just do an online learning day and we don't have to skip an entire day of school. And it makes sense. That way we wouldn't have to spend another day at the end of the summer taking these courses. But here's where it gets interesting. I asked Brannigan for a comment about whether or not the district had any plans to make snow days online days, and he said they didn't. His reason was because they felt that giving the students a day off for that mental break was more important, which is understandable and a good argument, which honestly, I was kind of surprised by his answer. I was totally expecting him to say that, oh yeah, we're going to do snow days online, but he said that they currently do not have any plans for that. So that's pretty cool. Now, the next thing that I wanted to talk about was whether or not online learning is better. This is a pretty big deal. Like I was saying earlier, online learning from my own personal experience has been better. With a lot of the courses that we're taking, the two main courses that I'm taking right now is a regular class where we go into the Google Meet, you know, talk to the teacher, he gives out the assignment, all that. And I don't really notice a difference between regular classes and online. It's sort of the same thing. The difference being that since it's I'm enrolled in TV production, we typically do a lot more of the paperwork sort of stuff online because when we're in school, that's when we actually get to do the more hands-on things. So I guess there's a difference with that. The self-directed classes are a little bit different because with that, you can just do the work whenever you want to, as long as you get it done before the end of the semester. So I think that for students, it's better. But I do know that some of the teachers are having a hard time with this. For example, they can't see your screen when you're doing these meetings. So I'm sure there's like a bunch of people that during a meeting will just like go and play Minecraft or something in the middle of the meeting. So there's that. Um, one of the biggest challenges that I've seen, a lot of the teachers have said that this has been one of the biggest challenges of their career. 
I think that's largely because this is something new for them as well. They've never done anything like this before. To change up a lot of their teaching techniques and styles and things like that. And with and that brings me into another point is that kindergarten kids, dear God, that must be a nightmare to work with. Are we learning the same material at the same rate? Are we missing the crucial information? With the information presented, it seems as though the students enjoy online learning, at least from my perspective, but the teachers don't. So once again, I'm only one person. So... And if you feel the same way as me, if you feel that online learning is easier than doing it in person, then I think you're beginning to understand that the point that I'm trying to make is that for students, it seems easier, but for the teachers, it seems harder. So that leads me to ask the question, who takes the priority in this case, the teachers or the students? If the school's gonna keep doing this for, for however long this pandemic lasts, if they're gonna keep doing this, Who's going to take priority? Now, I encourage you to think for yourself and decide for yourself if you think online learning is better and what will happen in the future. The more you think about it, the more clear it becomes. This has been Ryan Franey from MET News. We'll be right back for my MET, but first, here are some PSAs produced by the Television Production One students. <laughs> Before riding your bike, you should always make sure that your tires are not flat. If they are, pump them up. You should also check your brakes. If they don't stop quickly, then you might need to buy more. And please remember to always wear a helmet. Check it before you wreck it. The big bad coronavirus is here to hurt us and take us away. But if you wash your hands and socially distance, he will stay away. But if you do not, he will get very angry and attack us. Bye for now. Wash your hands and stay socially distant.
They shouldn't be bullying you just for what you wear. Like, come on! Hi, my name is Aiden Coet, and today I'll be showing you how to play video games as long as you want if you do your homework. First, you have to do all your homework. Show, the, show your parents that your homework is done. Third, now you get to play video games. And remember, good grades equals more games. Watch out! One text or call could wreck it all. Teens who text while driving spend 10% of their time out of the lane that they are currently driving in. Hi, my name is Colby, and today I'm going to teach you why it's not okay to drink and drive. If you drink and drive, you're more likely to get yourself hurt as well as others. You booze, you cruise, you lose. Running is 
very important for your physical and mental health. Running one mile a day reduces the risk of getting cancer by 40% for kids and 70% for adults. Studies show that running helps control mental tension in your body and it also helps relieve stress. If you feel too intimidated to run or if you do not have the time to run, then you can always find a time to run when you are not busy or you can run with a friend, family, or even a pet. That's also great too. Running is meant for everyone of all ages and it is super fun to do. I highly encourage you to start running whenever you have the time to. And I hope this PSA really inspired you today and run with America today. Thank you for watching. Hey, let's go get some food. Yeah. Make sure to put your sabot on. Nah, I'll be fine. <laughs> I warned her to put her seatbelt on.
Crosso will ruin your future. If you don't believe me, look at little Jimmy. If you smoke like I do, then you won't be able to move as fast as you used to. <coughs> Did you know that 15 to 20 percent of all smokers have get some type of cancer in their lifetime? That's too much of a risk for me. Did you know that in 2020 alone, over 390,000 injuries were caused by texting and driving? In fact, every one in four car crashes are actually caused by texting and driving. Only you can help lower the statistics, and it's really simple. All you have to do is to just turn off your phone. And if you still think that you could be distracted, you can just turn your phone onto airplane mode. To turn your phone on airplane mode, all you have to do is swipe down and then press the little airplane button right there. Then you won't get any text messages or anything that will distract you. Did you know in 2020 about one in every five high school students vape? People who vape are 30% more likely to have a stroke and 56% more likely to have a heart attack compared to people who don't smoke or vape. Not only does vaping affect your heart and lungs, but your brain too. Nicotine can slow down brain development in teenagers while also affecting memory, self-control, concentration, and mood. It can also increase the risk of addiction in the future. As I've told you, vaping can cause very serious health issues. It can affect the body in many different ways, and we still don't know the full extent of the risks that come with vaping. I urge you to stop vaping at all costs because it can ruin your future. MHS Student Council has started the Class vs. Class Thanksgiving Food Donation Drive. Anything from canned goods to soup, toiletries, and more is accepted. All donations are due by the week of Thanksgiving on November 24th, and the class with the most donations wins. MHS students in all cohorts. Picture retakes will take place on Monday, December 14th, and Thursday, December 17th, both from 12.30 to 2.30. Thanks for watching this episode of MET News. Join us in a few weeks for our next episode. MET News wishes everyone a safe and happy Thanksgiving. I'm Leanne McDonald. Have a great night.